every time I do a video on this story, I tell myself, this is it. This is the lowest that it can go. It can possibly go any lower. And each time I'm unpleasantly surprised and shown otherwise. Good day, ladies and gents. I'm Hills and I'm disgusting. And this is another Assassin's Creed video. It just refuses to end. It's like it has taken a course to just show us how bad and how controversial everything can be about this game. It's like it's trying to be this reality TV star that is just so scandalous and everyone is showing it on TV and he has no regards or whether the reception is positive or negative it just wants to be famous and before this video continues just to mention to follow me if you want on my patreon page where you can find several different donation tiers 80 percent of everything i receive on patreon will go to homeless animal shelters and help animals in need building houses getting food getting supplies getting their medical help and veterinary help and just helping homeless animals that are on the street as well as getting them to a adoption and rescuing from potential cute shelters the other 20 percent will just go to me to update my gear and to provide you with better videos in the future thank you and on to the video the stories i'm about to cover today are just so bizarre that i refuse to even believe that they're true anymore because you will think that after so many things that have happened after so much controversy after so many people have risen against the course that ubisoft has taken with assassin's creed shadows even the absolute biggest brick wall of a head will tell themselves maybe we should do something different but no apparently that's not the way people think anymore i'm going to start with a bit of an older story from july 15 that i didn't cover in my past video assassin's creed's shadows boot receives sparse traffic at japan expo i'm just going to quickly hover over this it's about the Japan Expo that I covered in which they showed that they're going to present the game and that they stole, apparently, Zoro's sword and tried to present it as Yasuke's sword. But after this report, we have the official Assassin's Creed Shadows booth, which was at the Japan Expo. And you can see this is an embedded image, by the way, I cannot click it. Just look at how scarce the entire event is. First of all, you can see from here, and I'll show you some different pictures afterwards, just how little the booth is. And you have people sitting with their backs turned on from the screen. They're not watching the presentations, they're just sitting there. And I'm going to show you a post from Grooms, because that's where I get my news apparently just got a report from someone at japan expo ubisoft staff are asking that anyone using the seats at the assassin's creed shadows booth to turn around to face their screen people were using them as benches to watch the much more popular nintendo booth across the way nobody cares about ubisoft and just want to show you several things this is the assassin's creed's booth i don't know if these people are there but I think so, because you have Luigi's Mansion, you have other Nintendo boots, and just look at what the Assassin's Creed's booth is. This is like four, one, two, three, four, five, six benches. This is six benches, so basically, what, 10, maximum 15 people. And look at what's happening here. Look at how big the screen is. And he look at here, this is just a, like a TV, and this is a huge screen. And I'm not going to comment on whether or not it should be as big as Nintendo or not, but this is a game that you want to present at this expo because it's a huge expo, and you want to present it and just going there with a TV and just some flyers, it's just, it doesn't seem right. Yeah, you get some decorations as well, okay, and maybe there's more boots on the game, or maybe this is another boot, but this, this just looks very downsized and very minimalistic, which is not something that I would expect from Ubisoft at this point with a game that they want to present as a top performer this year. But in any case, this is just one of the things that happened over the past few days and as bad as this may be or just as disappointing as this may be there's some other stuff that are just even more mind-boggling moving quickly over to a post again by grooms because 
this is he, he's posting very very intensively and you can see a lot of things that are happening before you read them anywhere else so this is about thomas lockley who is the alleged yasuke historian who apparently edited a lot of things on wikipedia and on other sites to fit his book and the, the things that he wrote in his book. And up until a certain point, he was just someone who wrote that book. But what Grums wrote here is that Ubisoft has used them as a historical evidence. And he posted this image that Thomas Lockley has examined some surviving evidence and historical sources that Yasuke is Japan's first African samurai. And this was on a Ubisoft podcast where Thomas Lockley has attended. He has seen the deleted his social media and he deleted uh, his sources and uh, he's very very hard to be found but because everyone is chasing him no, but this is a guy who wrote an entire book uh, explaining that Yasuke is uh, a samurai where other historical documents explain that he is not and this is not something new this is a clear subversion of history that someone did. In this case, this person, Thomas Lockley, did that to official Japanese history. And if we didn't have access, wide access to other historical documents and other sources and other YouTubers, we wouldn't know that history. Or at least very few people of us would have that history. But in this day and age, you have access to everything. This is something that boggles me because you have access to absolutely every major piece of information. And if you dig around long enough, and if you ask around on the forum, on community sites, you can get information that it's not even readily available and it's a bit more obscure. And that's what happens because you have Japanese people who rose up and provided actual evidence of who Yasuke was, what was his role, what was written about him in official documents from that time period that have survived and that have been put in a museum and that have been preserved and have been translated. And while it's very interesting to see and read about how they are trying to subvert Japanese history, there is another thing that has happened afterwards that confirmed a long-held rumor about the romance options that were suspected to have been DEI'd for this game. And what I mean is that both Yasuke and Naue would have been able to romance people from their own gender and from the opposite gender freely. Which I immediately want to reiterate that this is not the issue. The, the whole thing that they would be able to do that or that any character in a video game would be able to do that is not the issue. It's just when it is forced and when it has a background that is trying to support this particular game that it's historically accurate. Which is not to say that you cannot add fantasy elements or changes to a historically accurate setting. However, when it's down to your protagonist that you have already subverted to some woke agenda and something that he is not, it comes off as very, very forced. And this is the article from The Gamer. Assassin's Creed Shadow was always going to be queer. There are two articles, I'm just going to scroll over this one real quick. Ubisoft has revealed that Assassin's Creed Shadows, the newest installment of the series, slated for November 12, will once again include same-sex romances. Yeah, so there were same-sex romances in the other games as well. The article explains that the relationship will be a bit more advanced and will be unique to their individually designed characters and the queer representation feels more intentional well yeah it feels intentional because it is it's forced in that game and i love this comment here as anybody paying attention to the discourse around the game could have predicted the same conservative sect sect of gamers sect of gamers is amazing who have been angry about an assassin's creed set in japan having a black protagonist is now also upset about the protagonist having the option to have same-sex relationship and once again this was never the issue we know that yasuke existed nobody would have had an issue with a black protagonist nobody has issues with these things on their own what people have issues is when it's forced diversity when it's diversity for the sake of diversity i 
said that in my first video. Had you not claimed that this is a historically accurate game and just done it the way you have done your other games, nobody would have batted an eye. If you had put in the fantasy elements that if you didn't claim that this was a game that you can learn history from, nobody would have had a problem with. Further down the line and we get to the juicy part. Why is Yasuke queer though? It will be reductive to say the ridicule from these players is simply because queerness is included. The focus is on the fact that Yasuke specifically is gay. The discourse has shifted from Yasuke wasn't a samurai to Yasuke wasn't gay. It hasn't shifted. Firstly, just searching the phrase samurai gay will lead you to countless pages about homosexuality in Japan and how it was actually a common practice for older experienced ninja to train a younger warrior and take him as a lover if the younger warrior agreed. And and yeah, I searched several of these sites and there are references to those relations. However, I have a very nice question about that. Why do you focus on this historical accuracy and you don't focus on the historical accuracy of if is Yasuke truly a samurai or even the basic historical accuracy of how plants grow and which plants grow and how a Tory gate should be placed and what it should be accompanied to. It seems that the focus on this historical accuracy is much, much stronger than on the actual visual historical accuracy that you should represent in the game because this is what you will be doing. You're going to be in the world exploring, fighting, interacting with the world. So shouldn't that be your first focus at historical accuracy in your historical accurate game this is exactly what i mean it's not about the inclusion it's it never was about the inclusion it's about the focus when you play a video game and when you play a samurai video game i don't think that the most important thing is to highlight on how there were gay samurai and gay lovers and things like that no they want to fight with swords they want to fight enemies they want to cut people they want to have souls in the right horses and wear cool armor and that's what people want to see from a Japanese action game. And if you claim that the game can teach you the history of Japan, then that is not the most important thing in the history of Japan. There are countless more things that you should learn from a game that apparently has to teach you these things. And just the focus on how accurate you are claim you want to be and making those absolute beginner mistakes that are mentioned in so many videos from Japanese people about the the simple infrastructure of the world that you claim that you had Japanese experts help you with that just puts you in the place on where you want your focus to be on. And that's why people are angry. And that's why we cover these things. And that's why there's a petition. And that's why people will be angry and they will boycott this game. You can go and read these articles and make your own conclusions. However, the thing is that there is so much controversy surrounding this game. Most of it is absolutely justified. And I'm saying this as another right winger. First of all, I don't live in America. I live in Eastern Europe. So these right wing, left wing things are absolutely completely foreign to me. If I should have had any right or left wing Pol uh, political or not political, I would be in the middle because I support things from both sides. And I'm in no way against inclusion and natural inclusion and just people being happy together and just living their life because that's the way everyone should live. However, when you force something down people's throats and when you use a medium, a product that people enjoy and people want to exclude themselves from reality for a bit, just to play and have a good time to relax and you force these things into their mouths especially when all around the world there is so much controversy especially regarding this stuff it's like preaching and Tessa Kaur the author of the piece that I just covered can call us a sect or whatever they want to however we are simply people who want to have a good time we want to have good games 
quality products, nice movies. We want to enjoy ourselves. I personally work a day job, nine hours every day, five days a week. When I go home, I want to play something good or watch a movie or a TV series and just exclude myself, just just turn my brain off. And if I have to watch everything that I come across in my daily life and I have to keep my mouth shut or just reserve my opinion as to not to get into pointless arguments, then I'm not having a good time, I'm not having a rest. And this is very, very bad behavior on the game companies and especially on Ubisoft because you baited the people who wanted a samurai themed Assassin's Creed game for over 10 years now. And now that you are giving it to them, you're giving them a product that nobody is going to enjoy. And and this game is getting praise from the same people that blasted Ghost of Tsushima. And as Per my promise to you, I covered everything that there is to cover to this story. I think I'm turning into an Assassin's Creed channel soon now. But anyways, that's all I had for today. Please let me know what you think down in the comments. If you enjoyed it, if you didn't enjoy it, share your thoughts. Follow me on my socials, follow me on Patreon and on X especially, where I post daily updates. And I'll see you later. Thank you, cheers and stay fresh.